I'm Petula here, your host, and here's a question for you. Should agile teams be stable? There are advantages and disadvantages to anything, but in this case, research seems to indicate that stable teams are really what you want when you consider leading those teams to high performance. So stable teams are those where you bring the work to the people instead of the usual approach of those you know, project or ad hoc teams where you bring the people the specialists into the work. So let's first look into the advantages of having a stable Agile team. So Agile is used when you have a lot of complexity and uncertainty to deal with, and it's a way for you to try and simplify and deliver something despite all that change and all that uncertainty. Now, in that kind of universe, consider that if you could have at least one thing that is certain that really doesn't change that much, and that one thing would be your team. Would you take up on that offer? I know I will. So at least one thing that doesn't change amidst everything else that's moving parts is a great advantage of having your team stable. Many team development models exist. The famous one is the Tuckman model. It's the one that states that teams transition through several stages together from forming, which is getting together, to storming, all that clash, and then to norming, which is kind of finding a groove, all the way to performance. And that's where you have all that effective teamwork happening. As you can imagine, if you keep adding and removing people, you are constantly getting back into that uh, initial phase of development and doing the cycle all over again. So instead of focusing at getting better at doing your work and mastering your craft together, you are always going back at the drawing board with the team agreements um, with ways of working in all that much needed team boundaries definition. Interpersonal adjustments do take time and the team operates at a much higher capacity when they don't have to keep going back and constantly invest time on the basics of good teamwork. Stable teams mean stable costs, like literally, it's that straightforward as an advantage. Literally, if you keep your team together, budget costs for your team become the simple math exercise, not a complex one. So you basically know how much your team gonna cost for six months, for a year, you decide the time. Now, when you consider projects, they usually were shorter lived and they have a way of allocating people where you bring the people to the work. So you inject people here and there. And in many cases, because you need to make that specific date, at some point you inject a lot of people and then your costs that were budgeted low, all of a sudden they increase and they explode. So in the spirit of bringing the work to the people, you assign work a mission to the teams that is really aligned with their abilities and with their desires. It really makes budgeting all that simple. There is the advantage that people like to call throughput, but I don't like that work so much. Um, and I don't like that nomenclature because I feel that it implies doing more units of work. And that could just be a bunch of stuff. So you know better. You know that more pieces or units of work don't necessarily mean better quality or better value delivered. What I prefer to mention here is that stable teams tend to deliver better work with less effort over time. So the tools and the processes and the team dynamics have all been mastered. What is then left is for the team to do the work, focus on the work to be done, getting better at it. If the team gets disbanded or if there's a lot of people being added or removed all the time, what happens is that most of the improvements they still can happen, but they are more like individually, and then the individuals take that somewhere else. The famous continuous improvement, if you really think about it, can only happen when there is continuity. It all sounds so awesome in having stable teams, right? But then you have to think, are there disadvantages to operating this way? And yes, there are. The first one is that working with the people that you know and that you trust will not just automatically transform or translate into high performance. It is possible even to grow too comfortable and instead you settle on a rhythm that is not necessarily effective. And that comfort can also hide a lot of dysfunctions. The next disadvantage I can think of is in the realm of specialists. So specialists come in, they know what to what needs to be done and they get it done. Now, 
If your team is being confronted with brand new work to be done, brand new technology, something that no one in the team really knows how to do it, you know, unlike having specialists, it can, it can take quite some time for you to see any valuable result, anything somewhat useful being developed. So can your product and can your department wait for that? I don't know. I talk more about that in the blog post link down below. And uh, I also talk about the biggest obstacle actually to having stable teams. We hear how difficult it is in bigger corporations to try and establish and respect the bring work to the people, this notion of stable teams. And the reality is that it has less to do with the ability to keep those teams stable and more to do with way, way too many projects and initiatives started all at once. So it's, it's um, a prioritization issue, not a team composition issue. So if all that really interests you, go read some more because this video ends here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.